Swithin was an Anglo-Saxon bishop of Winchester and subsequently patron saint of Winchester Cathedral. His historical importance as bishop is overshadowed by his reputation for posthumous miracle working. According to tradition, the weather on his feast day will continue for 40 days. The precise meaning and origin of Swithin's name is unknown, but it most likely derives from the Old English word Swith, strong, recorded life. Saint Swithin was Bishop of Winchester from his consecration in October 853 until his death on 2 July sometime between 862 and 865. However, he is scarcely mentioned in any document of his own time. His death is entered in the Canterbury Manuscript of the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle under the year 861. His signature is appended to the witness lists of several Anglo-Saxon charters. Of these charters three belong to 833, 838, 860 to 862. In the first, Swithin signs as Swithunus Presbyter Regis Egberti, in the second as Swithunus Diaconus, and in the third as Swithunus Episcopus. More than a hundred years later, when Dunstan and Ethelwold of Winchester were inaugurating their church reform, Swithin was adopted as patron of the restored church at Winchester, formerly dedicated to St. Peter and St. Paul. His body was transferred from its almost forgotten grave to Ethelwald's new basilica on 15 July 971, and according to contemporary writers, numerous miracles preceded and followed the move. Traditional life The revival of Swithin's fame gave rise to a mass of legendary literature. The so-called Vitares, Swithuni of Lantfred and Wolfstan, written about 1000, hardly contain any biographical fact. All that has in later years passed for authentic detail of Swithin's life is extracted from a biography, ascribed to Gasellin of St. Burton's. A monk who came over to England with Herman, Bishop of Salisbury from 1058 to 1078. From this writer we learn that St. Swithin was born in the reign of Egbert of Wessex, and was ordained priest by Helmstan, Bishop of Winchester. His fame reached the king's ears, and he appointed him tutor of his son, Ethel Wolf, and considered him one of his chief friends. Under Ethel Wolf, Swithin was appointed Bishop of Winchester, to which see he was consecrated by Archbishop Sealnath. In his new office he was known for his piety and his zeal in building new churches or restoring old ones. At his request Ethel Wolf gave the tenth of his royal lands to the church. Swithin made his diocesan journeys on foot. When he gave a banquet, he invited the poor and not the rich. William of Malmesbury adds that, if Bishop Eelstan of Sherborne was Ethel Wolfe's minister for temporal matters, Swithin was the minister for spiritual matters. Swithin's best-known miracle was his restoration on a bridge of a basket of eggs that workmen had maliciously broken. If stories connected with Swithin the two most famous are those of the Winchester egg woman and Queen Emma's ordeal. The former is to be found in Gesellen's life, the latter in Thomas Rudborn's Historia Major, a work which is also responsible for the not improbable legend that Swithin accompanied Alfred on his visit to Rome in 856. He died on 2 July 862. On his deathbed Swithin begged that he should be buried outside the north wall of his cathedral where passers-by should pass over his grave and raindrops from the eaves drop upon it. Veneration. Swithin's feast day in England is on 15 July and in Norway on 2 July. He was moved from his grave to an indoor shrine in the Old Minster at Winchester in 971. His body was probably later split between a number of smaller shrines. His head was certainly detached and, in the Middle Ages, taken to Canterbury Cathedral. Peterborough Abbey had an arm. His main shrine was transferred into the new Norman Cathedral at Winchester in 1093. He was installed on the Feretary platform, above and behind the high altar. The retro choir was built in the early 13th century to accommodate the huge numbers of pilgrims wishing to visit his shrine and enter the Holy Hole. Beneath him, his empty tomb in the ruins of the Old Minster was also popular with visitors.
The shrine was only moved into the retro choir itself in 1476. It was demolished in 1538 during the English Reformation. A modern representation of it now stands on the site. Patronage Swithin is regarded as one of the saints to whom one should pray in the event of drought, for he will stand by your side in those tough times. Legacy Many churches dedicated to St. Swithin can be found throughout the south of England, especially in Hampshire. See List St. Swithin's Church. An example is St. Swithin's, Headbourne Worthy, to the north of Winchester. This church is surrounded on three sides by a brook that flows from a spring in the village. The Lich Gate on the south side is also a bridge over the brook which is unusual. Other churches dedicated to St. Swithin can be found at Walcott, Lincoln, Worcester and Western Norway, where Stavanger Cathedral is dedicated to him. He is also commemorated at St. Swithin's Lane in the City of London, St. Swithin's School for Girls in Winchester and St. Swithin's Quadrangle in Magdalen College, Oxford. Proverb. The name of Swithin is best known today for a British weather law proverb, which says that if it rains on St. Swithin's Day, the 15th of July, it will rain for 40 days. St. Swithin's Day If thou dost rain for 40 days it will remain St. Swithin's Day If thou be fair for 40 days, twill rain name air a. Buckinghamshire variation has if on St. Swithin's Day it really pours you're better off to stay indoors. Swithin was initially buried out of doors, rather than in his cathedral, apparently at his own request. William of Malmesbury recorded that the bishop left instructions that his body should be buried outside the church. Ubia pedibus pretir un chame stilicidias are ex salto rirenti bis esset obnoxious, where it might be subject to the feet of passers by and to the raindrops pouring from on high, which has been taken as indicating that the legend was already well known in the 12th century. In 971 it was decided to move his body to a new indoor shrine, and one theory traces the origin of the legend to a heavy shower by which on the day of the move, the saint marked his displeasure towards those who were removing his remains. This story, however, cannot be traced further back than the 17th or 18th century. Also, it is at variance with the 10th century writers, who all agreed that the move took place in accordance with the saint's desire expressed in a vision. James Rain suggested that the legend was derived from the tremendous downpour of rain that occurred, according to the Durham Chroniclers, on St. Swithin's Day, 1315. More probable is John Earle's suggestion that the legend comes from a pagan or possibly prehistoric day of augury. In France, St. Medard, urban of Langres, and St. Gervais and St. Protise are credited with an influence on the weather almost identical with that attributed to St. Swithin in England. In Flanders, there is St. Godelieven in Germany the Seven Sleepers Day. There is a scientific basis to the weather pattern behind the legend of St. Swithin's Day. Around the middle of July, the jet stream settles into a pattern which, in the majority of years, holds reasonably steady until the end of August. When the jet stream lies north of the British Isles then continental high pressure is able to move in, when it lies across or south of the British Isles, Arctic air and Atlantic weather systems predominate. A similarly themed proverb exists in Swedish, in which a mild and rainy 30 November means a cold Christmas period, and vice versa.